In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at and picking open the American Lock Series 7200, which is a tubular core padlock. Hey folks, welcome to Pugs Picks Locks. If you're new here, feel free to click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so that you'll always be notified when I release new content like this. And if you like the video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and click that like button and then leave a question or comment down below. I'm more than happy to engage with you in the comment section either to receive your feedback or to answer your questions. And I do need your feedback. I don't always get everything right. So did I get something wrong? Is there something I could do differently? Something I could do better? please let me know. I'm always looking to learn from you so that I can expand my skill set, expand my knowledge base, and provide you with better and better content. All right, let's dive in. What we have today is an American Lock 7200. Now, the Series 7200 padlock differs from typical padlocks that you'll find because it is a tubular core. It has a tubular lock. Um, and this means that the pins, rather than being arranged in a straight line um, inside the core, they are actually arranged in a circle around the edge of the core. You can see the tops of the key pins um, underneath the ring, the outer ring there. So when we have our key and we insert our key you see our key is also a tubular shape with notches cut into the edge to um, move the key pins to the proper depth when we insert our key um, we find the other thing that makes this lock a little bit unique and most tubular core locks are not sprung they don't have spring tension. You can see that to tur I'm turning the key against spring pressure. So the sprung core, and you can see that the key works, the sprung core, and you'll see the key snap back. The sprung core means that when we, um, not just when we turn the key, are we fighting against the core to move the, um, the core to open, um, we're not just fighting against friction um, from the core to move it to open. We are actually fighting against spring pressure. So that means that when we tension it, when we tension this lock, we're going to have to tension against that spring pressure, which means we're going to end up using more tension than we would with a uh, non-sprung core. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, hopefully it does. So let's go ahead and get this lock set up in a vise and um, and we'll go ahead and try to pick it open. Okay. So I'm going to try to set up the vise so that you have a good view of the core. I have a good angle to attack it um, and that my hands won't get in the way. But the nature of these things is that my hands will actually probably get in the way. Um, this is a pan of vice junior, by the way, and uh, I like this vice a lot. Um, my problem with it is that these jaws are plastic, so that uh, when I uh, try to lock down something inside of it, you can see that the jaws bend a little outward a little bit at the top, so that um, it's holding more securely down here, and the lock can wiggle its way free. So that's why I'm using. Um, this little microfiber cloth here to um, kind of uh, get a better grip so the jaws can get a better grip on these on the lock body okay let's get that set up and then let's get it inside of our vise but overall I like the pan of ice junior a lot and so if you're looking for a uh, cheap um, vice for picking I can recommend this one just keep in mind 
that the jaws are plastic and you might have to see how much more secure that is. You might have to take a little extra measures here. All right, so I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna try to arrange this so you have a decent view um, the entire time, but my hands are gonna get in the way and I do apologize for that. Let's get that centered in the camera for you. And uh, um, it's a little bit warm in my studio, so my hands are sweating a little bit. So um, if you see the pick sliding around or seeing me having to readjust on the pick, it's that's the reason why. Okay, so let's get this turned this way. All right, so this is a goat wrench from Sparrows. Um, you can see a little Sparrows chess piece logo in the middle there. This is a goat wrench. Um, I have a love-hate relationship with this wrench. I mentioned in another video that um, I love the functionality of it. I hate uh, some of the ergonomic design aspects of it. Like, why the hell would you put sharp, pointy ends on it um, so that when you're tensioning, it's digging into your... Uh, I mean, just it's just digging in there. So... Um, having it dig into the flesh of your fingers and causing you know permanent life-altering injury um i mean you can see that it's you can see the impression of it in my finger already anyways i'll quit whining um the way that this works is that uh this protrusion this thicker protrusion goes into this notch in the plug not the notch in the outer ring. It goes into this plug, notch in the plug. And then this smaller angled protrusion on the other side, that slips in between the plug and the outer ring. And then it kind of bites down on the plug itself so that you can then um, provide tension and turn the plug. Like so. Okay. Yep. And then we pop it out like that. That's brilliant. Come on, wrench. Don't embarrass me on international TV. International YouTube. Of course it's going to. So, um, so it goes in like that so that we can then provide tension. And then the pick that we're using is this broken pagoda hook um, from South Ord. Um, the tip broke off of it, so now it is very much a uh, feeler slash probe slash decoder slash tubular lock pick. Um, kind of like a Peterson knife um, bypass tool or decoder tool or whatever they call them. So um, when you are picking a tubular lock, basically you're applying tension and then you're just literally going around the lock, pressing the, pin, the key pins one at a time uh, to try to set them. It's very similar to trying to pick a standard, um, a, a standard type of pin tumbler lock where you touch each pin in turn you look for the one that's binding if it's binding you press it and try to set it so we're doing the same thing we're just going in a circle around the lock touching each key pin in turn until um, all of them are set now these are tapered pins in this lock and so that means that you're gonna have to we're gonna have to set each pin more than once um, we'll feel the binding we'll press it and then uh, it'll, it'll, it'll set or feel like it's set when it might not entirely be set. It just moved down the taper a little bit. Okay. So the, um, so we're going to go around and like I said, my hands are a little bit sweaty. So if they slip around and I have to get un unconventional grips or whatever. So, um, one of the other things to note is that you're not going to get a typical shear line click, that solid click letting you know that um, something has been set. It's more of a little thunk, if you get any sound at all. 
And then you know it's quote unquote set or as set as it's going to be because there's going to be, after you get the thunk, there's going to be just a millimeter or less of springy travel when you tap the top of the pin. So that was pin seven. Now we're going to move to pin six. And that's binding quite hard. So let's. So you hear that little thunk? Um, and then I test it by tapping the top and I get just a teeny bit, a millimeter or so of travel out of it. So let's go to pin five. That's kind of springy. Um, pin four. So we get a little thunk and then springy, teeny bit of springy travel. Pin three is feeling uh, springy. Pin two, binding. That might have overset. Nope, it feels good. And then pin one. Okay, a little bit of springy travel. And then back to pin seven, it's binding again. There, and so now, and so that's what I mean. You're gonna go through and you're gonna, we already set pin seven once. That was the very first pin that we set. So we're gonna to have to set it again and we might have to set it again and again. Um, on a typical tubular lock, it takes two to four, sometimes up to five passes um, around the lock to get all the pins set properly. On a uh, lock like this with um, tapered pins, it's gonna, it can take up to 10 passes or so, pin six, there. Um, we got a little movement out of six again. We had, a, that's the second time we've set six and now five was binding. And now four, still feels set. Three, still springy. Uh, two, feels set. One, springy travel, seven, Okay, so this is now the third time that we've set uh, pin seven. Pin six, I feel set. Five, four, three, two, and there we go. So here's a, one of the things about tubular cores. I just picked it open, quote unquote, picked it open. But then you heard all the pins just drop back in. Um, and the uh, shackle did not open. And that's because in order to get it, in this case, it's a 90 degree turn. Um, so you see the notch used to align with the, the notch in the plug used to align with the notch in the outer ring. And now that notch is pointing straight up. I need to turn it one more that's an eighth of a turn, by the way. I need to turn it one more to here in order to get the open. Um, the way that, uh, because they're arranged in a circle like that, when you turn the plug, the key pins that were aligned um, turn and then they drop into the chambers for the, um, or the driver pins pop back up into the chambers that were just vacated, you know, when you turn it. So that means you actually have to pick these lock mul locks multiple times. You have to pick them over and over again, which is a little bit of an inconvenience. Um, it's just time consuming. It's not like a hard thing. You can see that this is not a difficult, this was not a difficult task so far. It's just a time consuming one. So if you um, wanna watch me pick it to the second position, um, you're of course more than welcome to do so, but you can skip ahead if you just want to see the open and hear the summary at the end. Okay. So now again, I am using, um, a pretty good amount of tension. I mean, you can see the tension tool kind of bending, um, as I do this. So hard tension, pin six. I don't have to set pin seven, by the way, because pin seven is now sitting where this notch is and there is no pin stack there there's no chamber there with a driver pin and a spring so this is just 
um, sitting there. So I do not have to pick pin seven now. Pin six feels springy. Pin five feels springy. Pin four, springy. Pin three, springy. Pin two, okay, got a thunk out of two. Pin one, and now pin six. Got a little bit of a thunk out of six and a little bit of springy travel now. Five, still a little bit of springy travel. Four, springy. Three, springy. Two, uh, set to a second time. And one. Okay. So if I go through and I'm not really making a lot of progress, I will increase the tension and then go through again. Okay, so now um, six, I got a thunk out of six. Now five is binding. And now four, four was binding. Three, two, are we gonna have to set two again? Nope, that feels good. One. So like, and remember when you, the way a pin should feel in its set state or as set as it's going to be at that moment, um, state is when you touch the top of it, it should have, we set six again. It should have just like a little bit of springy travel, a millimeter or less. Uh, five, four, Still feels good. Three. Still feels good. Two. Still feels good. One. Still feels good. So now I'm going to increase the tension even more and go through again. Got a little bit of movement out of six. When I touched it, um, I got a click and a teeny bit of core movement. Five. Four. Four is binding. Four is binding quite tightly. Okay. Three. Feels good. Two. And then one. And then back to six. Six is binding again. Okay, five, feels good. Four, feels good. Three, and there we go. Um, and there's the open. So, um, and Salvatore Swivel, and there we go. Okay, so let's move this out of the way. So that was the American Lock 7200. And the key things to remember here are the increased amount of tension that you need and that every circuit around, that, that you're gonna have to pick it, quote unquote, open more than once, at least two times, sometimes even more. Um, if it's 90 degree turn with a seven pin lock, that'll be two. You'll have to pick it two times, um, like this one. So you'll, you're going to have to pick it multiple, like you're going to have to pick it to the next position around the dial as you're um, around the, the circle, around the tube. You have to pick it to each position. The, um, the 7200, because of the sprung core, and if you run into any other tubular locks with a sprung core, you're gonna have to use more tension on the tension wrench than you might think that you actually have to use. And if you make a circuit around the entire pins, all the pin stacks, if you make a circuit all the way around and you have zero progress, increase the tension a little bit more and then go through again. And if you, any time you make a circuit without any progress, just increase, crank down on that tension more. You're also gonna have to get used to um, different ways that the pins feel. 
it does not feel like that same click 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 when you're like when you're picking um, a typical pin tumbler you get those those nice click 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 of the um, shear line of the driver pin passing the shear line you're not going to get that so you're going to have to get used to feeling for little tiny minute movements in the tension wrench and you're going to have to get used to feeling that thunk and then that teeny bit of springy pressure um, a, a springy travel i mean when you tap the top of a key pin um, that kind of tells you that it's that pin is as set as it's going to be at that point in time all right and then you just keep going around and around increasing the tension each time you go and eventually you'll get the open hey folks thanks for watching if you liked the video remember to drop a like and leave a comment or a question below if you're new here subscribe and ring the notification bell for more content like this until the next video Happy picking y'all.